Alright, so I just finished watching Megamind 2, The Doom Syndicate, and I, I think I'm more depressed than I've been in a really long time. Like, I actually feel like the rest of my day is ruined or, like, somehow altered because I've watched this movie. Like, it just gave me some permanent debuff to the rest of my day. Now, I'm not the type of guy that usually just watches animated kids' movies, and the only reason that I gave this one a chance is because I have a lot of nostalgic memories of the first movie that came out back in 2010. That movie was perfection. It, it was a masterpiece. I love that movie. To this day, it's still one of my favorite animated kids' movies. And I feel like since the whole era of, like, the early 20s, 2010s animated kids movies have just kind of fallen off like we just get dumb shit now like elementals or uh, what's another bad animated movie that I, I can't say turning red because then people will just be like oh that movie it's good it was the uh, women but yeah elementals and, and morbius those are some two really bad animated movies that came out recently and this one definitely continues the trend now what i usually do in these videos is i'll just give a whole play-by-play -play throughout the entire movie and recap the whole thing but I'm not going to do this this time because I have to go to work at 5. And I also don't really feel like this kind of warrants a whole video for me. But the first thing I want to talk about is the animation for this movie. I feel like that's the most jarring thing that just immediately pops out to you. It's shit. We have animations in this movie that are on par with Battlefield 4 kill cam animations. Like, you ever got knifed in Battlefield 4? It's like that quality. A lot of these characters, when they walk around, it looks like they're just moonwalking forwards. Like, whoever was in charge of animating this just moved their legs up and down and just kind of, like, moved their model forward, kind of. Like, you ever use Scratch in school and had to like make an animation of a character moving forward like that's what they did here it, it's hard to explain it's like they just moved their legs up and down and then just pushed them forward in the environment and this is just an ugly movie in general like i get the first movie kind of set the precedent for what the art style is supposed to be here you know the characters are gonna have big eyes and look kind of jarring and ugly like i get that but i mean the actual quality of the animation and one thing i noticed is that the quality of the animation actually kind of changes between shots this is most noticeable in the beginning of the movie they'll have one shot where everything's like rendered and like in super high quality and there's shadows on everything and then it'll cut to another shot where it, the frame rate drops and then nothing is rendered or has shadows or shading or anything like is the project projector struggling to run the movie like is the cpu overheating like what is happening there's also a lot of times where the characters will be animated on front of these ai generated backgrounds or something i have no idea if it's actually ai generated it just kind of gives me that impression everything just looks a little bit too perfect and a little bit too smooth and it just kind of uses a different color palette than the characters do like look at this right here and tell me that this doesn't look ai generated they just took these characters and then just placed them in front of a photo and it's like i know this movie is performing terribly but at the same time i don't even really think they put that much money into it to even lose it's like betting five bucks on something if you lose it's not that big of a deal because you just spent five bucks on it i think that's what happened with this movie and i think that's the mentality that the studio has behind it like well who, who fucking cares i did a little bit of searching around just now to try to find out what the budget of this movie actually is but I can't find it anywhere. And I don't know if that's because they're embarrassed that they spent so much money or that they're embarrassed because they spent so little money. But judging by the way this movie looks, I'm gonna just assume the budget was a pint of caramel Ben and Jerry's ice cream and a handshake. Like, dude, I've seen animations that were made by a single person that look better than anything in this whole movie. Now, to give a brief summary of the plot of like what actually happens in this movie, this movie takes place two days after the first one. And since then, I guess Megamind has broken out of prison again and she changed his mind about being a bad guy and has turned into being a good guy so he's given the key to the city and then he just goes around and then saves people and has like this huge following of people who adore him because he's a superhero or something really then i suppose this is one of those smarty pants bones with a calculator oh it has that corny music in the back wow, when they talk really and it's an awkward scene it has the music that was like bum 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 you know that music <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah, it has that. Yeah, it has that in the background. <laughs> I know. Why do I know, you know exactly what, what the fuck you're talking about? Exactly you know what I'm talking about. Crime fighter, just like. It has that music that goes like bum 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 in the bum. <laughs> oh no. Dude, the fact you know what I'm talking about, that that's like the worst music. Like, I hate music oh, like that. Man, I think a lot of a lot of like kids shows and movies oh. always play that when there's like an awkward scene or a Get scene awkward, where there's supposed yeah. to be tension. <laughs> yeah, I hate scenes like that. We such a genius plan. I cannot wait to get started. Oh, the music is yeah, so bad, actually. dude. This time, talking about their evil plan, the music in the back is like, 
in, in the back. Is it like just royalty free, like YouTube music it's like library? Kevin McLeod music. Kevin McLeod. <laughs> Everybody was using his music early 2000s. Every YouTuber is using Kevin McLeod's music. All of the music in this movie is just so terrible. And it's not even really that it's terrible, but it's just so cookie cutter stock. It's like whoever's job it was to add the music to this movie just looked at whatever the theme or mood of the scene is and just went and found a stock song to just slap on it. Like, oh, this is a suspenseful scene. Let us let me go on YouTube and type in uh, copyright free suspenseful music and then they just would add that to the movie. The music never stops. It's just one continuous stream of music that plays throughout the entire movie. There's never any silence, any room to breathe. It's just this one track of music that just changes and just will it'll just like peak and have like a higher moment when like something more i don't know impactful or surprising happens and it'll dip back down again if throughout the entire movie for just an hour straight it never ends it's just one continuous track of shit so then after that minion comes up to him and then asks if he can be his official sidekick and then megamind just kind of acts like a dickhead and then says no and then that sends minion on his own character arc where he tries to like find another job and ends up fixing up a diner or, or something i don't really remember because i was like playing clash of clans so they actually changed his name from minion to chum and I think, like, they wanted to separate themselves from Despicable Me in, like, the Minions movie because they have, like, this fourth wall break where they reference that there's, like, another company that is using the name Minion so that they can't use it. So they change his name to Chum on the spot, and it's just so bad. And I know that this is a kid's movie, but the whole explanation makes no sense. Like, imagine my name is Bob, and then Bob's Furniture comes out. Like, do I have to change my fucking name? No, I don't. And throughout this entire movie, Megamind acts like a complete dickhead to minion to the point where he just leaves megamind and moves out and it's like dude megamind would never do that bro like i, I know i i'm talking like super deeply about a fucking kids movie that came out 14 years ago and the thing it's crazy is that all of this has been done before they had a falling out in the first movie and got mad at each other like wouldn't they just recognize that they already did this in the first movie and then like not have this happen again and i just want to point out that there's a lot of continuity errors in this movie like in this scene there's this car right here in one shot and then like the shot changes to her face and then changes back and the car is gone there's a car in this shot right and then reporting the cars is right here but megamind has been a hero and then for the only a few changes. days and he's already making a big difference in this city can't help thinking they, maybe there's the shot a changes to this doing more too so then right after this scene, Wait, it abruptly cuts to a table where a group of villains called the Doom Syndicate are sitting together and just introduce themselves in the most awkward way possible. Because this girl in charge who uses weather powers says everybody should do a roll call, even though there's like four of them. Like, why do you need a roll call for only four people? There's only three other people. You can't remember i i don't know i i just don't know so then they work together to break out of prison for some reason they still have all of their gear and equipment in prison and they're in a prison with normal inmates that don't have superpowers and to get out to the outside world all they have to do is open this one door that leads directly out into the street like i get it's a kids movie but i would really like if the movie wasn't you know written by kids as well so they make it out of the prison and then they find megamind and then tell him that he's done a really good job pretending to be a good guy and that they're ready to go to phase two of a plan that he told them where phase one consisted of them going to prison voluntarily because he was just trying to get them locked up and turn into a good guy and that's pretty much the plot of the movie that's it so megamind has to pretend he's a bad guy to the rest of the doom syndicate but then also actually be a good guy to the rest of the world and it's just the safest most generic plot i've ever seen in my life in the first movie it was established that he's megamind you know he's a super smart guy he's made all of these machines and cars and robots and he even built minion suit that he walks around in he somehow figured out how to get a fish to control a, a giant mech suit oh. Oh, his toaster is broken. I, I, was about to say, I thought it was going to be a pickle. I almost predicted it. It's going to be he can't open the pickle jar, but it's, his toaster won't work. And it's not going to work because it's not plugged in. Toasters need to be plugged in. Yep, I knew it. I'm omnipotent. Show me what you did, sorceress. Maybe you should call. But then in this movie, he doesn't even know how to use a toaster. He doesn't know that you just take bread and then put it in the toaster and pull down the lever. 
to cook it. And I'm sure that a lot of 55 year old Karens were slapping their knees, laughing at this from the back of the movie theater, but I didn't think it was very funny. I thought it was kind of stupid. Bro, you know crazy? it sounds like you regret spending money on watching this, even though you didn't spend any money on watching it. I, yeah, I, yeah. That's what it sounds like. It sounds like you regret spending money that you didn't spend on this movie. <laughs> yeah, it does. It's like, it does. Even if it was free, even if it was free, I didn't want to watch this shit. Yeah, <laughs> That's I'm what watching it, it like. for free, and I'm feeling like I've been cheated. I've wasted your money. <laughs> I feel like I wasted my money, even though I'm watching it on 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 my filter. So I did a little bit more research, and I actually found a real reason why this movie looks so bad. Now I can't really play any clips from these movies to you guys without covering up with a cat but what i will show you is this picture that i found right here comparing the old movie from 2010 to this movie well the reason is that the movie actually wasn't animated by dreamworks themselves it was animated by dreamworks tv animation team so this is the team that handles all of the tv shows that they animate like the how to train your dragon show for example so that's why it looks so much worse because they probably had a lot lower budget and it wasn't even actually made by the dreamworks company and the reason for this is because this is supposed to be the pilot to to a new animated Megamind show that I'm not gonna watch. And I don't really think I'm over exaggerating here by ragging on the animation this much. There's a scene at the end of the movie when Megamind finally takes down the Doom Syndicate and they shoot tennis balls at them from these tennis ball guns. Or at least that's what they want you to believe because the tennis balls don't actually even come out of the gun, they just teleport in front of the the barrel and then just shoot out because i guess they didn't feel like animating the tennis ball come out of the barrel of the gun they just made it go pop like right in front of it and then shoot out and there's all these other kinds of super jank animation for example when the doom syndicate breaks out of this prison and they blast through this wall even though they spent a super long time trying to figure out how to get this door to open they just blast through the wall anyway for a frame they don't even exist until they just fade into the scene i guess they just had like some opacity meter that they just turned up to get them to appear here. It's just so lazy. For example, there's this one scene where Megamind has to rob this bank in front of the rest of the Doom Syndicate to, I guess, show them that he's still a supervillain or something. So then he's backed into a corner where he doesn't want to actually rob this bank because he's a good guy, but at the same time, he doesn't want to show the people watching him that he's a good guy because they still think he's bad. And then this girl from earlier in the movie just teleports inside of the bank, doesn't even go through the door, doesn't even show up, wasn't even already in there. She just teleports and then just gives Megamind the answer as to what he's supposed to do because the writers just written themselves into a corner and couldn't figure anything else out. It's, uh... it's a safety drill. Huh? For Megawatch, half a million viewers, we're making this for the kids at home so they know what to do in case a real villain comes into the bank. Right, Megamind? Yes. I mean, yes! So we have these other four supervillains and the Doom Syndicate group, and Megamind is trying to stop them from doing super evil things, but it's never actually said what the evil thing that they want to do is, and that's because it's stupid. So it turns out the big bad thing that these criminals actually do is just go on something called a crime spree, where the four of them just group up together and walk down a city street and just destroy random things. There, there's no greater plan they're trying to do. They just walk down the street, and just break things and just cause damage. So Megamind follows around the Doom Syndicate as they go on this little crime spree thing, but what he tries to do is repair everything that they break after they leave and walk further down the street. So he has these machines behind them that's repairing the stuff that they're breaking. If it's that easy to deal with these guys, like you think you could just let them just exist. If they're just going to go on crime sprees, you can just repair the stuff behind them in like five seconds. Don't you have more important things to worry about than somebody breaking a fucking sign? And then there's so many other things in this movie that just don't make any sense. Like the mayor being so stupid that he doesn't even know how to make a phone call, which like... You know the mayor had to be elected, right? Like, he had to have a whole campaign and people voting for him. How did he even get elected and put into this position if he's too stupid to make a phone call? But it's like, I'm not really sure how much I'm really allowed to make fun of this movie and like all of the logical inconsistencies and how nothing makes any sense because at the end of the day, it is just a kid's movie. But 
I don't know. I, I just feel so strongly that one of the most disappointing movies I've ever seen because I liked the first movie so much as a kid. I think the number one thing that's wrong with this movie, besides the terrible animation, is that nothing even really happens. I think that's because the studio that made this movie wanted to spend as little money on it as humanly possible. So they just didn't really want to animate anything. So because of that, nothing really happens because they didn't want to animate anything. Like the villains go on a crime spree and literally just walk down a street while things get destroyed around them and before that when they first get introduced they're getting introduced in a dark room that with no background because they just didn't feel like putting the characters in a background because think about it for a scene like this that takes place in a prison they couldn't just put a still image for the background like they did for every other single scene in this movie they would have actually had to maybe animate things a characters walking around in the background maybe guards walking around prisoners in their cells you know people eating people like walking around and doing things and they were just like man we already spent 20 bucks on this movie i'm not spending any more money on this shit so they just put them in a dark corner and then made everything dark and try to like make it a joke that it gets revealed to be a prison when anybody with a brain can see that the real reason is because they're just being cheap i mentioned earlier how this movie came out alongside a megamind tv show and that show is called megamind rules and it's an eight episode animated show to basically go with this movie and this movie is basically supposed to serve as a pilot for that show and when you realize this it kind of starts to make more sense why this movie sucks so bad they basically just took the first three episodes of this show and then smashed them together into this movie and it just really begs the question of why does this movie even exist like i know there's a lot of people who like the megamind movie like it's a cult classic but the thing is like i don't think there's people out here rallying in the streets with signs and torches and picks forks begging for this movie to come out i think dreamworks was just sitting on this property that they hadn't used for a really long time and thought they could just make some money off of it and just had the whole mentality of oh it's just for kids like it doesn't have to be good just throw some slop and just put kevin mcleod music on it and then kids will watch it and something like that might have worked years ago before like social media and youtube shorts and tiktok and stuff but nowadays kids don't really sit down on their couch and watch saturday morning cartoons anymore they're just kind of given a tablet by their parents and just doom scroll through youtube shorts all day so even if that is the purpose of this show it just kind of shows how out of touch the people making it are on top of the fact that the original movie came out like 14 years ago everybody who watched that movie as a kid is like my age now i'd assume that no eight-year-olds of today really know what megamind is they don't really care they just watch like skibbity toilet videos on tiktok final thing i want to say about this movie though is that i know with a lot of the videos on this channel i'll make fun of cgi and movies and compare it to like a wii game or a gamecube game but no not this time. This movie legitimately looks worse than a Wii game. There was a Wii game for Megamind called Megamind Mega Team Unite. Back when all kids movies and action movies had to have some shitty Wii game to come out with them so that the studio can try to make more money from it. Jesus Christ, remember the days of movie tie-in games? This game, or at least the cutscenes in it, look so much better than this animated movie that was made by DreamWorks in 2024. And this was a Wii game that came out over a decade ago. Like you can actually look at the material on Megamind's costume and just kind of see that it looks like it's made out of leather and see that the spikes look like they're made out of plastic or metal or something. Like the things look like they're made of a material that exists. It's not just a flat color that was bucket tooled onto him. Like look at all of the expressions on Megamind's face that like th that was like so many expressions within a few seconds. This new movie doesn't even come close to that at all. But yeah, I think that's pretty much everything I have to say about this movie. It's just very disappointing don't watch it it's just a complete waste of your time and this movie didn't even really need to exist it's just a cash grab by dreamworks to just try to see what money they can get from people i yeah, thank you guys so much for watching the video i'm gonna have a madam web video coming out soon or at least i'm planning to i don't i'm still like in the stage where i don't know if i'm gonna scrap it or not but i just had to put that on hold to kind of just make a quicker video 20 minutes is what i consider to be quick nowadays i know 20 minutes is still pretty long I really hope this doesn't become a trend of companies that are sitting on these properties that made a bunch of money years ago. Animated kids movies, I mean specifically, and they just go and just dig up these old IPs and just try to see what money they can squeeze out of it while investing as little as possible. I'm just, I'm just praying 
praying that that doesn't become a trend because what happened here is just actually just depressing to be honest if they gave this movie some more time and just some more love and some money maybe this could have been good but unfortunately that wasn't the case so yeah uh leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video i guess grab a channel membership if you're just uh, the coolest guy ever i would really appreciate it and uh yeah that's pretty much it i'll see you guys soon